Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a scroll to stick header in a Squarespace website. This is what that effect looks like. I'm honestly not sure what to call it, so I'm gonna go with scroll to stick and I hope that makes sense. In any case, what we're gonna do is push the header of the website to the bottom of the page as soon as it loads. And then when you scroll up the page, the header will get stuck at the top and all the other content will load underneath. Now this is specific for version 7.1, but if you're using an older version of Squarespace, I can teach you how to modify this code for yourself. So let's go ahead and hop into Squarespace and I'll show you how this works. So here we are in Squarespace and I wanted to show you what this looked like because I really struggled to name this one. I'm calling it scroll to stick, but you'll notice the header of my website is down here at the bottom of my screen and I have a page section right here. But if I scroll down, as soon as that header hits the top of the page, it stops. So we'll call it sticky or scroll to stick, whatever you want to call it. This is the code that makes that magic happen. Part of this code you're going to want to change. So let's hop into design and custom CSS, and I'll show you how this works. Now taking apart this code, let's go ahead and scroll down here. There we go. This very first line says dot header. That's the name of this in version 7.1. If you're using an older version of Squarespace, just modify dot header to match what the header is called in your version and theme. Head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash themes for more information on that if you're using an older version. All right, so we've said, hey browser, make it sticky. And where's it going to stick? when it hits the top of the screen, top 0px. Now I gave it a margin top of 85vh. That's what scooted it down the page when it first loaded. That's what places it below this very top section here. This 85vh is specific for the size of font and the button size I have in my header. You might need to change that to 90. You might need to change that to 80. You're gonna wanna adjust that so it looks perfect for your own website. VH means view height. So I have it taking up 85% of the view height at the very top. So definitely change that to suit your own site style. After that, I added a border to the top of my header. So it was just easy to see the difference there. Super customizable, not necessary. If that's not the look you're going for, you can completely remove that line if you want to, or change the color or make it a super thick border if you want to. Lots of different options there. This was just for the style of my own demo site right here. So customize that how you see fit. Now this part right here is very important. This is what sets this up on this specific page so that the first section is at the top. I gave it a negative margin on the top to pull it to the top of the screen. And again, this is super dependent upon the content that you have on your site, the size of the font and the button inside your header, padding and all that stuff too. So adjust negative 110 until it looks perfect for your own website. Same with 100 VH, you're going to want to have something close to 100 here because you want this to take up most of the screen. That was what I needed it to be for my own site. Now margin at the bottom, I added that line of code right there, again to scoot things around so it looked perfectly aligned with my content. If I remove that margin bottom, I want you to see how much of this picture is now behind the header. Adding that margin bottom makes sure I can see the full content of this second section here. If we don't separate those two sections, you're going to lose some of this content because it's gonna be right here behind the header. So I needed to add 10 VH so I could see everything. Again, all of these VH values, you're gonna to wanna to customize for your own website. Now, the last thing I wanna mention is that you might not want this on every page. You might want this just on your home page or just on a landing page on your site. If you don't want this on every page, do not put it in your custom CSS panel. Remove that code and select save Hop on over to your pages menu and whatever page you want this to work on, click the gear icon here and select advanced. Now this is if you have a business or commerce plan, if you have a personal plan, I've got a trick for you, stick with me. But if you're on business and commerce, I want you to type in the word style between two angled carrots there, a left and a right. This is telling the browser you're about to read a style code. In the page header, you can have all different types of codes. We've got to tell it, I'm gonna give you some CSS paste the code here and select save. This will load that code only on this page, not on any other page. So everything's gonna work the way that we had it before, but just on this specific page. Now, if you're using a personal plan, not business or commerce, I want you to click on that gear icon and remove the code that we added. You're gonna wanna paste that exact same code on the page in a code block. Now it might take a hot second to load because your code block's gonna load with everything else. So it's not ideal. Only do this if you're using a personal plan. 
select edit, and anywhere on the page, literally anywhere, I'm just gonna place it up here at the top. I want you to add a code block. I'm just gonna place it right here. I'm gonna click edit on that code block. We'll paste the code right here. There we go, you'll notice the style change is now taking effect. We'll go and select save. And that code block is an invisible block of content that the browser is reading, but the people who visit my site won't be able to see it, but we'll still get the exact same effect just on this individual page. So again, that's hop into edit mode, add a block of content. If you're using classic editor and not fluid engine, it's still the same thing, just add a block of code. I'm gonna double click on what we've added so I can show you one last time here. Make sure it goes between these style brackets. We have to tell the browser this is a style code, but that's where you can paste it if you're using a personal plan and you only want this on one page. Now, all the codes that I just shared with you are listed in the description below. Just make sure you edit those values so it fits for the size of the header on your own website. It's gonna be a little bit different than mine. So definitely grab those codes and give them a try. If you enjoyed this video, like and comment below and subscribe to my channel on YouTube because I post a brand new tutorial every single week and I wanna make sure you catch the latest. Thank you so much for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you're gonna love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my custom codes and pro tips inside one gigantic PDF available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.